Hello. In tonight's edition of Focus, has London become a breeding ground for terrorists? That's the question being asked by the British press, and in particular the tabloid press, as details about the Christmas Day would-be terrorist emerge. Well, the 23-year-old Nigerian suspect lived in London for three years, and it appears that he developed extremist ideas whilst he was an undergraduate there. Now, during that time, he was the president of the Islamic Society at University College London, where he was studying. Now, he is the fourth president of a London-based Islamic society for students to face terrorism charges in the space of three years. Now, one is facing a retrial in connection with the 2006 uh, liquid bomb plot to blow up planes. Another two have already been convicted of terrorism offences since uh, 2007. Now, all this has led some to, once again, brand the city Londonistan. Take a look. Reading his emails, analysing his phone records. Police have locked down Uma Farouk Abdumutalab's London apartment. It is here that he lived for three years, and authorities hope to find other candidates likely to plan a suicide attack. Once again, London is at the heart of an international terrorist investigation. It was here that the 2001 shoe bomber Richard Reid planned his attack and where in 2006 three Pakistanis were arrested for planning to explode airplanes on their way to the U.S. Now the British press wants to know, was it the city that turned them into terrorists? Just a few years ago, French security agents had nicknamed the British capital Londonistan. It wasn't unusual to come across men and women linked to al-Qaeda in the city's hardline mosques. After the 2005 attacks, London stopped turning a blind eye. But according to experts, it's not that easy. London will continue to remain a hotspot uh, because of the fact that it's a convenient hub linking Europe to uh, North America. Just like for many others, London was Abdumutalab's first direct contact with extremism. He became the head of an Islamic organization at his university, UCL. In fact, he's the fourth president of that organization to be accused of terrorism in only three years. The young student invited political figures to the group's meetings as well as Guantanamo detainees. University campuses are a known target for extremists. It is here that they often find their next suicide attacker. Abdumutalab also attended this mosque in western London, one of the city's most radical. The place is well known to authorities because of men like Iman Anwar Alaouki, thought to be one of the brains behind the 9-11 attacks and the one who inspired the American psychologist to open fire at a U.S. Army base last month. According to U.S. authorities, Abdumutalab had traveled to Yemen to meet the cleric and prepare his attack. He also took Arabic classes at the Sana Institute during the holy months of Ramadan. Alawuki himself was barred from traveling to the UK. Meanwhile, messages like this continue to be broadcast in London's mosques. The evil heart, nothing may work with it. Even if he had become radicalized here, what is it that the UK law allows you to do to somebody who's becoming radicalized but has not shown any inclination to do violence? This is the dilemma we face. Terrorist alerts are once again on high in the United Kingdom. For extremists, London remains a hub, but also a target. Well, for more on that, I'm now joined by Sophie Lusualn, a professor of British politics based in Nice in the south of France. Professor, thank you very much for being with us this evening. Thank you. Firstly, good evening. Good evening. Firstly, I would like to know, do you think that London really is a breeding ground for terrorists? Well, in many ways it is, because so many students from Pakistan, um, from Bangladesh, and from the former British colonies are attracted to London, because it's a place where they can learn so many things and where there is a great freedom of the press. Um, and I think that this freedom of the press um, is uh, one of the reasons why terrorism has so much developed in the United Kingdom, together with the uh, British laws, um, which are uh, not as tough as French laws. Professor, can you explain what you mean? Why do you think that freedom of the press has contributed to extremism? 
Well, uh, those students were allowed to um, were allowed to write articles in the press, and there's so many newspapers uh, from the ethnic minorities, um, and some of them uh, often spread fundamentalist values, um, and it's very difficult for the intelligence service to check those newspapers. But weren't there certain so, laws, weren't there certain reforms passed after the London bombings to present, prevent, prevent that sort of incitement of hatred? Well, you know, some laws were, uh, of course, uh, implemented by the Blair government and especially by David Blunkett, who launched the Terrorism Act, which was efficient in a way. But uh, you can't prevent clerics to preach hatred in mosques. And that's what should be uh, checked. But it's very difficult. And what should be mostly encouraged is the moderates uh, in Islam, uh, because those are um, good um, British citizens. But the fundamentalists are very difficult to tackle. And what do you think about and analysts... Sorry, Professor, what do you think about analysts that have uh, branded the UK capital Londonistan? Do you really think that's uh, very helpful? Is, it, is there not a risk of sensationalising this and ultimately spreading Islamophobia? Well, um, it's very dangerous, and it's the reason why, for instance, uh, the British Nationalist Party is um, rising um, in the United Kingdom, and it's, of course, a great threat uh, to democracy. Um, we should encourage um, moderate Islam. Um, it's very dangerous to um, stigmatize fundamentalists, um, but the government and the intelligence service will have to find new ways to prevent terrorism threats and um, to check those uh, fundamentalists. And surely, Professor, what we should be more worried about is these students then travelling to places like Yemen, which is, of course, uh, where Abdul Muttalib allegedly got his explosives. Yes. Well, you know, um, this uh, raises the question of um, uh, border controls and also the question of security in our ports. And um, certainly the United Kingdom and the United States will have to cooperate in order to um, uh, add more security in airports. And I think that travelers are quite ready to have more security in airports and um, checking um, and um, uh, more, um, well, uh, yes, more, more, um, more ways of preventing terrorism. And so, Professor, what do you think that the British government should be doing to prevent such extremism from spreading? Well, um, that's a very difficult question. Um, I think that um, the surveillance society uh, with um, CCTV cameras is one a solution to um, this problem. Um, but also uh, checking what um, clerics spread in mosques um, should be uh, done. And it raises the question of the freedom of worship, of course, which is a major uh, value in the United Kingdom. But um, it, it may be a solution in uh, the future. Um, and apart from that, um, I think that um, the intelligence services will have to find um, new technology in order to, um, uh, to, to prevent terrorist attacks. Um, and education also um, is, is a solution. Um, so um, I think that uh, this um, requires the help of um, the Home Office, the Foreign Office, um, the um, Justice Minister and MI5 and Scotland Yard. Thank you very much for joining us. That's all we've got time for uh, for this evening's edition of Focus. Sophie Luasan, a professor of British politics there, commenting from Nice. Do stay tuned to France 24.